I guess. Today we're doing something a little bit off key for the channel, but I thought that it would be worth talking about because I know here of late, I've just encountered a lot of Instagram, YouTube posts where people are changing things, leaving, and a lot of it is... A lot of it is factored by external reasons. And so, you know, people pushing other people to, you know, just not enjoy the EDC community as a whole. And so I thought today it'd be a fun video to kind of break down living to impress yourself. Now, I'm by far not uh, the first person to think of this. And, honest, and honestly, uh, if you guys haven't seen Nuttin Fancy's original philosophy videos, I think a lot of Nuttin's uh, videos are very good. I'm definitely a teen peer, have admitted it over the years, and I take a lot of inspiration from Nuttin Fancy or the Nuttin Fancy project as a whole. So Living to Impress Yourself was a video that he did a long time ago. Uh, it's an excellent video, totally worth the watch, along with The Workers Are Few. Um, there's just so many good philosophy videos from him. He really hits the nail on the head so many times, um, just with many different things like work ethic, life in general. But the one that I really wanted to talk about is Living to Impress Yourself, because on this channel, and I think especially when we delve into things like everyday carry when it comes to knives, you know, uh, gear, guns, um, even the vehicles that we drive, like this beautiful Tundra, um, you know, a lot of these things are really, you know, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so a lot of times when we come across different people um, or different, you know, people in the community, they may not share the same opinion or think that what we think is cool. And, uh, you know, that's totally true. It's totally fair. You know, a lot of people will say that these Chris Reeve knives, like this large and cozy is overpriced or, you know, uh, you can get better alternatives um, from overseas or Chinese manufacturers make things that are just as good. Um, um, and, you know, there may be some validity to that. There may be some truth. But at the same time, too, a lot of it really comes back down to living to impress yourself. And so whether, you know, you're picking up vehicles, uh, trucks, you know, knives, guns, gear in general, really trying to keep that kind of idea uh, alive and trying to keep that at the centerfold of why you do what you do. I think that's the most important point, and it's honestly, I think, the best point to aim yourself, because a for a lot of people, there are the lucky few that things like everyday carry is a kind of job for them almost, or everyday carry is a lifestyle for them, but for a lot of us, myself included, you know, everyday carry, these knives and stuff are a lot of fun, and I definitely enjoy owning lots of knives, collecting knives and stuff, but at the end of the day, it really is just a hobby, and so when it comes down to, you know, approaching each EDC as a hobby, even if you have experience and valuable, you know, experiences to share with other people through things like YouTube or Instagram or wherever, you know, it ultimately comes back to the fact that, um, you know, you have to you have to do what you find enjoyment with it. And once again, I think the easiest way to summarize that is living to impress yourself. You know, with this in Kosi, I think this is a really good um, kind of model or stand in here because the Nkosi is a knife that I wanted for quite a few years. Hadn't really been able to get it because, you know, I was getting a lot of outdoor knives, doing outdoor reviews, but I kind of made a pivot in the collection and, you know, turned the ship, so to speak, so that I could get things like the Nkosi, a knife that I had wanted for quite a few years and really did enjoy and still enjoy carrying. Once again, this was just in my pocket. And, uh, you know, really living to impress yourself kind of means that, you know, you are collecting knives that you enjoy. You're, you know, driving vehicles that you enjoy. And of course, once again, too, there is always the balance that, you know, so if you can't afford stuff, you shouldn't go for it. You know, you shouldn't be living a life recklessly. But if you do have the money to buy the vehicle that you want, if you do have the money to buy, to buy or if you do have the money to buy the knives that you want, you should buy them. If you you, you know, have the money and the ability to afford the things that you want, you should get those things. And ultimately at the core of getting those things, whether it's a Tundra like this, you know, where people will be like, oh, you know, that Tacoma was way better because I previously had a Tacoma, you know, the Tacoma was way better. Um, the tundra you know you should never trade them off there will be people that say that stuff there will be people that you know say oh you should just stop buying toyota products in general you know in many you know people feel similar about knives things like rick hinderer knives you know i like my xm18s and you know there's a lot of people that don't love them but once again when it comes down to the community you know there will always be people that have opinions that are contrary to you and a lot of times they will be voiced you know um i hear tons of feedback especially on instagram 
about, you know, things like, oh, you don't use your knives enough. You don't do X, Y, or Z. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about orienting yourself and, you know, just getting to a position where you're happy with your life and the acquisitions, whether they're gear, vehicles, houses, um, relationships, you know, any of those types of things, they really have to be, you know, they have to be things that you enjoy and that you get enjoyment out of. Now, once again, you know, collecting knives is a little bit different and it's a hobby. You know, you may not always enjoy you know, your truck, for instance, or, you know, a particular relationship. But ultimately, it's about, you know, aiming yourself towards where you can be happy. And really, I think more than just happiness, it really is like, you know, living an impressive life. And that's what... And that's what I really like about the um, kind of core message of living to impress yourself is it's not a life where so many people are concerned about like happiness, how to be happy, how to find happiness or, you know, key secrets. But I think there is a lot of happiness to be gleaned from living a life where you are impressed with yourself, impressed with your actions, impressed with your accolades, impressed with, you know, the acquisitions you make, things like houses, vehicles, knives, guns, gear, you know, um, and so really kind of ultimately bringing it back to, you know, looking and taking stock on yourself and saying, you know, what can I do? Not necessarily to make myself happy, but to make myself impressed with myself, you know, like a, doing a particular action or pursuing a particular career where it's like, you know, these actions that you took were valiant and they, you know, helped better the world. And, you know, you can look back on those and say, wow, you know, what I did there was pretty impressive. You know, the part that I played in whatever action or role, uh, you know, was impressive. You know, those knives that you have in your collection, you know, like every time I pick this in Cozy up, I'm impressed by it. You know, the tolerances are extremely tight. It's very well built. You know, every time I hop in this Tundra, you know, really making it an environment where I'm impressed. I love it. I look around, and you guys can probably look around a part of the truck, you know, and say, you know, I really like the way this truck looks. I really like the way it handles. I'm impressed with the truck. You know, owning a house where you can go to it, you know, look at it from the outside and say, wow, this is an impressive house. Now, once again, houses and parts of houses may break or get damaged. Vehicles may break or get damaged. So, you know, it's not like you're whole life is contingent on those things but when you look at the things that you've done look at the things that you have they don't necessarily have to make you happy all the time but they should be impressive things now the reason why living to impress yourself i think is very valuable especially as a content creator online is we expose so much of our lives some more than others um and whenever you do that, you are opening yourself to criticism. Once again, even if you don't expose much of your life, um, I like to think of people like Wrangler Star and Nut and Fancy, who, you know, especially in the beginning, really tried to live quite private lives, but still we get criticized. We get criticized for the choices of knives, guns, gear, truck we drive. You know, some people hate Ford, some people hate Chevy, some people hate Ram, um, you know, so we're going to get criticized on all of these things. But if you're living a life to impress yourself, I think the one thing that uh, Nut and Fancy didn't talk about, but is actually very important, especially for content creators, is the fact that that acts as a shield. I am impressed with my life and the place that I'm at, the role that I play in the community, in my local community, global community through YouTube. You know, I'm impressed and being impressed doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't room for improvement. It just means that when I look at my accomplishments, when I look at what I've done, what I've collected, what I've, you know, gathered over the years, I think that it is impressive and I am, you know, happy with what I've done. And so when you are living a life where that's your viewpoint, you're looking at yourself and you're saying, you know, this is an impressive life or, you know, what I've done is impressive. The role that I play in community is impressive. That helps act as a shield to criticism. When I'm focused on what I do and making my life impressive and once again, like, looking forward, you know, like you have the tundra of what's next, you know, with your life. Um, you know, when you're looking forward, you're looking at how can I continue to impress myself as opposed to, you know, oh no, I bought this knife or I was peer pressured into buying this knife that I don't really love. And now I've sold a whole bunch of knives that I did care about to buy this one knife, you know, that definitely can happen. And once again, I did sell in order to get this knife. I sold, you know, outdoor knives that I wasn't using, wasn't, uh, you know, weren't getting the proper attention and use that they should have been. So I sold those knives off to buy this knife, right? So I did that and I could look back and say, and I could look back and say, man, I really regret selling all those knives that, you know, those Essies, 
those SEs were such great knives and those SEs were great knives. But once again, living to impress myself means that I'm shielded uh, from outward criticism. I'm shielded or shielding myself from the negativity that people will invariably bring up. And if people bring up positive and negative comments, I do take them in stride and, you know, uh, I enjoy listening and reading those comments. Um, but, you know, ultimately what it is, is I live to impress myself. And so if what it means to impress myself would be, you know, dialing it back on the amount of outdoor knives that I have that I'm not using to acquire uh, everyday carry knives or folding knives like these that I will use more, I am going to do that because that is the route that I see fit. Now, you know, you might also say, you know, oh, I sold, you know, those different EDC knives um, and now I regret them and now I have this one that I don't really like. Well, that's also an opportunity, you know, you can't, the failure is not fatal, I guess, I, I think is the best way to put it. And I don't want to sound like too antiquated with throwing out these cute quotes, but truly, you know, when you come ac across times where you're like, you know, I was peer pressured into doing this and, you know, now I regret it. It's not so much like, once again, it's going back to live to impress yourself. You know, you can do that at any time in your life. You know, if you've made a mistake, it's like, okay, just pick up where you've left off and continue your fight forward, right? Once again, failure is not fatal. You know, it's not final. You're not like locked into that uh, way, so to speak. I mean, I guess if you go down enough wrong turns, you can be, but by and large, you know, you're not going to be locked into those issues. So by and large with enough, you know, time and enough conscience and conscious effort, you're going to be locked into those decisions, especially when it comes to things like knives. So, you know, this is a hobby. Don't take it too seriously. The last thing I'll kind of close with, um, you know, to those people uh, that feel that way. Once again, this is a hobby. This should be something that we always enjoy, especially when it comes to knives, you know, and even when it comes to larger ac acquisitions like houses or trucks, you know, once again, failure is not fatal. You know, if you get a vehicle, if you get a knife, if you get a gun that you don't really enjoy, that you can't trust, or that, you know, you need to get out of, you know, put your head together and, you know, put your mind, you know, at work to see how you can fix the solution. Because I see a lot of people in the community that, you know, they run across issues, they run across criticism, they run across the first problems or the first negative words, and they immediately just give up on the community or they just stop. And I think the biggest thing is the community is give or take for me. I mean, I enjoy having a community. I enjoy talking to people that are like-minded, but at the end of the day, this is, some, this is something that I do for the fun of it. You know, I, once again, I work a full-time job. I do that as my job. I work and I do enjoy my work, but at the same time too, I take a lot of pride and have a lot of fun with my hobbies. Things like collecting knives, collecting guns, collecting fun things and you know having vehicles to help me get off get to off-road locations and you know live that enjoyable life so you know it's it's one of those things where for most of us you know edc is a hobby it's something fun to enjoy but it's at the same time to you know live to impress yourself don't live for other people live to impress yourself because in doing that you will act or that will act as a shield against opposition and against criticism and also to understand that especially if things are hobbies that they are hobbies okay you can enjoy them for what they are if you make mistakes it's not a huge deal you know if you buy the wrong knife you know i think of it more as and i have done in the past myself where i have sold off knives that i thought I didn't like things like my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And after a couple of years, I was like, gosh, you know, I could really go for another Bark River Knives Bushcrafter again. And so what did I do? I proactively looked at, you know, how I can set aside money, how I can sell off stuff that I already have to go forward to get that uh, Bushcrafter again. So once again, failure is not fatal. It's not final. And really living to impress yourself, I think, is a a thing that I try to remind myself very frequently. And once again, it's not always easy to, in the moment, feel like, gosh, you know, I need to live to just impress myself. You know, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in drama, but just at the core, remember that, you know, you want to be making actions, taking actions and doing things in your life that you can look back on in the future and say, wow, that was really cool. Or I was really proud of that accomplishment. Or, you know, I got this medal or that acc accolade. 
I got this medal or that accolade. And man, that was really a, an accomplishment for my life. And so doing things like that and keeping that kind of foresight in mind where it's like, how can I do more things like that, right? How can I do things in my life that will make me proud of myself? And so I think that that's really the core of living to impress yourself. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, something that, you know, I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of philosophy videos and I'm certainly not as eloquent in speaking or breaking these things down. But when I see st people struggling and when I see people in the community that it's like, man, you know, just don't take this so serious. Don't take it to heart. You know, don't necessarily act like it's the end of the world. You know, we're here to have fun. We're here to be a community of like-minded individuals that enjoy similar things. And once again, there will always be those people, those uh, social outliers that are just there to cause hell and chaos and you know those people can exist they can have fun but uh yeah i'm not gonna be a part of it so anyways guys uh that is my uh, kind of breakdown of living to impress yourself hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully this makes sense you know i really do try to uh, make these videos uh, sensical and ultimately I really do try, I was really trying to make this video kind of make sense. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the discussion. As always, God bless and I'm out.